What's up, D Buzz and D Bo? So it's your girl April. You know what the time it is? It's Real Talk Diva time. Real Talk Wednesday. So, you guys, I hope you guys are ready for Thanksgiving because let me tell y'all, I'm actually has supposed to have started doing things tonight like potato salad, um, macaroni salad, making the pies. You know, it's actually Tuesday evening, and I really, really, really should have started this tonight. And I did have all plans and good intentions. But I started doing other things, and I just lost track of time. So I guess I'll be kind of a little bit longer in the kitchen tomorrow. I like to try to do certain things ahead of time because I just cannot stand to cook all of this stuff in one day. Like, I look forward to the day sometime, but then when it gets closer to that actual Thanksgiving day, it's like, oh, my God, do I really have to go through this again this year? But it's like, okay. Thank God it's just like once a year. And then, you know, for Christmas, you can do the same things. But I don't really do as much food on Christmas, but I just do enough. You know, I do enough to where it's like, okay, I'm over it right now. But anyway, so I started decorating the front of my house um, with my Christmas inflatables and just some like some candy canes and stuff. Like I love Christmas, you guys know. I love, love, love Christmas. I decorate all inside and I'll definitely make sure to share that with you guys. But I started doing it earlier this year because last year was after Thanksgiving and earlier this year I decided to do it. I decided to do it earlier this year only because next Thursday um, on the 29th, I'll be going in for my hysterectomy surgery. So I felt like, let me do it now because by next Thursday, I won't be able to, you know, move around like, you know, like I want to, you know, I want to decorate the Christmas tree. I want to put everything up. So I just figured, let me just do it like a couple weeks early. So next Thursday is the day. And <clears throat> I did go to the doctors yesterday for the pre-op. So, you know, he basically just let me know that I will be losing my fallopian tube and my uterus, my, um, over my fallopian tube and my ovaries on the left side and my uterus. And if he sees something wrong with the right side, that he's going to remove that uter that ovary and fallopian tube. And I'm like, listen, what do you mean when you see, when we start working and when we start doing your surgery? Listen, let me tell you, I need him to leave leave me with something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to go like through menopause. I'm I'm like I honestly hear like so many different stories about it from just so many different people, you know, and it just like puts you in well puts me in a mood to like just please leave them there. There shouldn't be anything wrong with them. You didn't see anything wrong with them on the ultrasound, so I would really like for them to stay where they're at and just take the left side. And he tried to basically tell me that if there is something wrong with the right side, that I might come back in a year because I'll be in pain. But might and maybe are, you know, might is totally different from definitely you will be back. You will for sure, positively sure, and then not sure. Like, if that's the case, then okay, I guess I'll be coming back. But yeah. I don't really want to go through menopause. Like I said, I've heard enough stories about it to where, you know, I know, like, I'm pretty sure you girls have heard the same thing. Like, when women go through menopause, they stuff be all dry. You know what I'm saying? Like, their stuff be dry. And you see the commercials with the KY jelly. And then you hear stories like, oh, I didn't really feel like being um, sexual or I'm not in the mood. They're not in the mood. Or just basically their stuff is dried up. Now... Um, I'm not really looking forward to my stuff drying up. Like, seriously, I am not trying to have any dry stuff. You know, I asked my mother, I asked my mother yesterday on the phone, because, you know, my mom is 64. So she has been through menopause already and she's passed it. So, you know, I feel like, let me ask her, but she's never had any type of like, you know, female surgery, like a hysterectomy. So, you know, I asked her yesterday on the phone, basically, I said, well, I let her know what, what they was going to do. And I told her, I said, listen, I'm, I said, mommy, I want him to leave my ovaries and my fallopian tube on the right side. She said, well, for what? And I said, because I don't want to go through, um, I said, well, she said, for what? And I said, because I need it. And so my mom goes, well, what do you need it for? You don't need that. You ain't been using that in years. And I'm like, I need my ovaries. I would like to keep at least my ovaries and my fallopian tube on 
well, at least one of them, you know, because I don't want my stuff to get all dried up. And she said, oh, my stuff has been dried up for over 20 something years. I don't, if a man came near me and tried to pull his thing out of his pants, I would tell him to back away. My mother is so crazy because then she started saying, you don't need that. I said, what do you mean? I don't need what? She said, you're not using it. I said, using what? You know, basically I'm like using what? So my mother said that I wasn't using my, you know, cootie. I said, um, why ain't I using it? She said, and then she says, well, I ain't been using mine in over 20 something years. You ain't been using yours in some years. I said, mommy, I use it. She said, you use it. I said, um, I do go, I do use it. I do go to New York, remember? And I'd be with my husband. She said, oh yes, you are using it again. I said, my mother is a, is a riot. And I couldn't believe she said she could even have said that. And even if I wasn't using it, I would still not like for it to be dry. You know what I'm saying? Like, so she just tells me that each woman is different, but I, it seems like this. Every time I go through something, like whether it be like, um, let's see, anytime, just basically, I just never have the best of luck with anything sometimes, especially if it's something that really is important to me sometimes. It just seems like I never have the best of luck. So I really can't go off of, you know what I'm saying? Oh, well, some women experience different things and it might not happen to you because Listen, like I said, I go, I always seem like I have the bet, the worst of luck. And um, I don't really want to be one of those women who are purchasing the KY all the time. So I just really want to keep the right side of me. You know what I'm saying? Keep it right there. But other than that, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm very, very ready. Excited, but not excited. You know what I'm saying? But nervous, but I'm good. I'm ready for this whole thing to be over with. But other than that, you know what I'm saying, um, really not much to to talk about um, because, you know, I'm just getting ready for the holidays and stuff. But let me tell y'all real quick. And in case you guys are like, why do I have on a hat? Okay, so today, listen, today I really did not want to do anything. Like, seriously, the only thing that I wanted to do was my real talk. And I did have good intentions on doing a wig tutorial video, but you know what? I said... I have too many other things to do, like go to the dentist with my son and, you know what I'm saying, like edit a video and I want to vacuum my rugs because the carpet guy is coming tomorrow to clean the carpets and so that way I can put my Christmas tree up and stuff inside and, you know, so I basically had too much to do. So, you know, today is one of those days where I just look like total crap and the wig is not even glued on. It's just sitting on top of my head just so I can make the the actual hat look cute like serious you know as long as my hat don't tip up and fall off then I'm good to go you know it hides that I don't have no makeup on and listen it was one of those days so yes so first of all my son comes goes and checks the mail for me and comes back with a package okay a surprise package now you guys know I love shopmissa.com okay everything on there is a dollar okay and maybe some things are not because they sell all type of brands but majority of everything is a dollar where everything is a dollar now shopmissa got their own actual cosmetic line the AOA and I absolutely love their makeup um Probably like 95% of it is only a dollar, but their packaging is so unique and it just looks so like exquisite. It just looks like it's like a really good brand for it to be a dollar. I'd just be so shocked that their makeup is like so freaking pigmented. Like you cannot find dollar makeup that is like so intense and like really, really worth more than a dollar. So anyway, I get a package and I get a surprise package. They have a limited edition, limited holiday edition palettes, eyeshadow palettes. Now, I don't know the price of these because I didn't um, take a look on the internet or the, on the online yet. But I'm pretty sure they're probably like $10 if so, um, maybe a couple bucks more. I should check right now while I'm on here um, and tell you guys. But... um. They sent me four of them, and they're actually so pretty. The packaging is, like, really, really nice, and I was just really shocked. So I just, I'm going to do an actual, you know, full video, but I just wanted to show you guys, um, you know, what they have. And I'm just looking right here so that I can show you guys the price. So this one is impressed. This this one is impressed. And I'm not going to do any swatches because, I, you know, this is a real talk video, and I didn't want for you guys to, they're $10. 
And see, look at that. They're ten dollars. So, and there are actually um, four palettes to the collection. So all of these. So this one is impressed. There's 25 colors in the palette and these things are so freaking pigmented like girls. Oh my God. If you love makeup, you definitely have to check these. You definitely have to check this one out because not impressed, immersed because this palette is like to die for 25 color shadow palettes and it's an limited edition A20 holiday palettes. Yeah, A20. Why do I always say AOA? Well, it says shop AOA, but it's the A20 lab. This one is XOXO. And um, yeah, if you guys love neutral colors, you know, some of these neutrals, like very warm tones. Um, I hope the camera is showing you because when I look at it here on the camera, it looks, um, you know, like a different color. But this is um, the XOXO. Definitely look online because you'll see the true color of the actual palettes because it just looks like it's a different color. This one is bare. The packaging is like bomb for $10, girl. 25 shadows. This one is bare. And these are like, you know, all warm tones. I love it. It's like, serious. I love it. Look at that. Frosted and matte. Like, come on, girl. Where is you getting at? So I'm just going to tell you guys, you know... If you want to do a real talk, okay, this is vanity. If you want to do a, if you need a real talk video about yourself or someone that you guys may know, you can go ahead and send me a real talk. You can go ahead and send me an email to mufflersmylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put it in the subject line, real talk, so that way I know it is a real talk episode. If you want to change the names of the people you're talking about in the email, you can go ahead and let me know. But if you don't, 99 Point nine percent of the time, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, I'm gonna go ahead and change the names for you guys. So, with that being said, let's get into this real talk. Huh? 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 What? Damn. Alright, you guys. Hey, April, I found your channel over the summer and I have been binge watching your videos ever since. I love your personality and the advice you give, so I am hoping you could help me out. Sorry, this might be a bit long, but here it is. I have been with the same guy for eight years now. We are both 26. He has been my best friend since high school and there for me when no one else was. Two years ago, I got diagnosed with endometrius and the heart disease and heart disease within months of each other. Needless to say, it was a tough year for me. The following year, a mutual friend of ours passed away, and my boyfriend took it very hard. Our friend's death happened around the anniversary of my boyfriend's father's death, so I understand that he was struggling. I just never expected he would act out the way he did. He already had a drinking problem that he had finally gotten under control. Well, he started drinking again. I also caught him flirting with other women over social media. If that wasn't enough, I caught him with his ex. I was so hurt, I packed his shit up and told him I was sorry he was grieving, but he had to go. This was not even the first time I had caught him talking to a woman in the past. But I thought he had grown up and finally stepped and stopped all of that. He stopped talking. We stopped talking for about a month. Then he reached out to me and told me he was very sorry and wanted to get help, which he did. I agreed to start talking again and then and be there for him. I wanted to know, I want him to know. I was supportive of him making good choices and I still did care for him. Over time, we got closer and eventually got back together. A few months after getting back together, I then was rushed to the hospital. When he arrived and after being checked out, I was told I was going to need surgery right away. They told me I had a failing heart valve. I was terrified, but everything aside the procedure went well. I am recovering now. Only problem is where my man at. Most days after work, he is at the bar. He comes home drunk. I never know what mood he's in or, or will be in. He has been adding random women on Facebook. I feel like it is partially my fault because we are only 26 years old and I'm sick. I am unable to do much right now and I know I do not look my best. I, don't, I do not think he even finds me attractive anymore. Wow. At, since having the surgery. I have lost a lot of weight and the medicine has my hair thinning. April, what should I do? P.S. Best of luck on your upcoming surgery. You're in my thoughts and prayers. You know what? 
this is so sad because you know what it is like okay so she didn't give me a name or anything like that so we're just gonna call her Tiffany it's just you know it's just so sad when people are just with people in general you know what I'm saying like it's sad when people go in general go through shit like health issues you know what I'm saying and they feel like they should basically take what the other person is dishing out to them when they're in a relationship. Like, I feel like, you know, she should have more confidence in herself because I just didn't really like to hear the end of it, how she just stated, you know, she feel like she's unattractive or basically like, I feel like some type of way right now. Like, seriously, like, okay, I understand that we all go through shit, but you know, when you're not at your best health, I, I hate to see that person that is ill being just taken advantage of. It's just ba it's just like, you know what? You've already gone. Sorry about that. You know, I just hate to see, like I was saying, people that, that are in bad health or are going through something really strong to just be taken advantage of. Like, it's bad enough to be already taken advantage of, but for someone to take advantage of, of another person who is ill and is just going through a lot, that's just like some real sucker shit. Like on some real shit, that's like some real, real sucker shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? You 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 already see that the person is kind of weak and you just take advantage of them. And taking advantage of them means like anything. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cheating, going out to see other women, just doing shit that you know you have no fucking business doing. Like who does that? And it feels, it feels sad and it and I hate to be to have to read shit like this because it's like come on man you should really be there for the person no matter what regardless of what but you should definitely be there for them when they are at like you know what I'm saying somewhat their weakest point or their weakest point like I hate to see when men do shit like this and you know what I'm saying she's basically like what should she do you know first of all it sucks, Tiffany, that, you know what I'm saying, you are going through things for anybody. And it really sucks and, and fucked me up, like, you know what I'm saying, for him to be treating you like this. Alcoholism or just him drinking in general is not even going to solve shit, like, on some real shit. And then, you know what's so fucked up is, like, I hate to see people, like, it's not even that I hate to see people, but I just kind of, like, despise the shit, like, what the fuck do people get out of DMing other people on social media? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Instagram or Facebook. Like, what the fuck do you think you're going to get out of that? And then if you have a girl, what the fuck do you think you're going to get out of that? First of all, he's lucky he even had the opportunity to get back with you on some real shit. Because you done caught him with his ex-girlfriend. You done read messages on social media. Okay, you know what I'm saying? And on top of that, you know... He started acting up. Okay, everybody grieves differently, but that's not even a fucking excuse. I understand everybody grieves differently, but there's no motherfucking excuse for cheating, okay? And then being caught with your ex. There's no excuse for that. I don't give a fuck what happened to you in your past, in your present. There's no excuse for that. The only excuse is you're a motherfucking dog and you need to go ahead and sit down somewhere and have several seats and fucking close your mouth and never say shit to me again. Like, that's some bullshit right there. Like, sorry your father or whoever passed away, but listen... There is a boundary, and it's called respect. Nigga, have some. He got a drinking problem. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing you got to deal with. First of all, Tiffany got to deal with her boyfriend's drinking problem, his lack of respect, okay? And then she has to deal with her own health issues. Let me tell you this. Life is short, and I say this to you guys all the motherfucking time, okay? It is short. Regardless of how long we live, we can live to be 104. That's still short compared to how long the motherfucking earth and world has been here. So it's short, okay? And it's short-lived. And you know something? You know when you get, you know when you older. Like, I, not that I'm saying I feel old, but sometimes I, I, I catch myself because it's like, you know, like I be telling my husband. I'm not even trying to have no drama in my life. I don't allow anybody to give me bad vibes. And I can't be around it. Like, serious, I cannot be around the negative, negative shit. Regardless if you are my friend, my kid, I cannot have you constantly around me with just your negative thoughts or your unmotivated self or your laziness or just your 
negative vibes because it kind of like drains me. It just seriously, seriously, seriously just sucks the life out of me. Okay. And needless to say, I just really cannot tolerate the shit. And so I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Life is short. Like you cannot allow somebody to bring you down and make you miserable. I just feel like sometimes when like this situation with Tiffany and her boyfriend, you know, she's going through a lot of health issues and a lot of shit also with her boyfriend. And, you know, the health issues is one thing. Like it's not like it's hard to get through. And for her to have to deal with other shit, it just, I feel like, you know what? It's making her health issues even worse worse. Sometimes we just got to let go of that negativity and just let it go and just walk away from the shit. Like, and her boyfriend is total negativity. You know what I'm saying? Like total negativity. I don't know if it were me, I I just wouldn't be bothered with him because why was he with his ex-girlfriend? Like on some real shit, why was he with his ex-girlfriend? Why did she catch up to one of his ex? She didn't say how she caught him. She didn't say she caught him in the bed, fucking her, or out in public. Either way, it don't fucking matter. Why is you with the bitch in the first place, okay? And at that point, I would have just basically said, you know, you could keep him, you know, and I would have blocked his ass from any type of contact, social media, fucking news, mail, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Please don't contact me. And now here it is, Tiffany. You got your own health issues. And is he even fucking, like, bring it to the table. And when I say bring it to the table, it don't mean just necessarily paying the bills and helping support, you know, the home front. I mean, supporting you morally, you know what I'm saying? Is he helping you when you're sick? Like, is he just being supportive, 100% supportive to you? And okay, we could even say 99.9% supportive to you. And I'm only going to say 99.9 because listen, he might have to go to work. And he might not be able to be supportive at the moment. But basically, you go on to work as a supportive thing. So, yes, is he being 99.9, 100% supportive to you? If he is and bringing it to the table, if he is not, then girlfriend, maybe you should just let him be. Let me tell you, you have to take care of your, yourself first. This is the, the most important thing. The most important thing to anything in life is taking care of yourself first. Regardless of what the fuck it is, you have to make sure that Tiffany is okay. You have to make sure that everything for Tiffany is set and she's doing good and she's good and she's happy with herself and she is feeling good about herself. And until then, you have to let all the negative shit go and focus on Tiffany, Tiffany's wellness, Tiffany's happiness. You got to focus on you, girl. I understand that we don't want to be alone. Maybe some people do want to be alone. Maybe some people don't want to be in a relationship. Regardless if it's man on man, woman on woman, man on woman, whatever. I understand this. But sometimes we have to be alone, for real. Sometimes we really need to be the fuck alone with just us and nobody else. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about you got kids because they can stay. But I'm talking about in a relationship, a physical, you know, adult relationship with, a, you know, someone else. Sometimes we got to just be alone away from that because it will allow us to focus on ourselves and figure out what the fuck we want and who we want to be. Like when I say who we want to be, how do we want to be happy? What type of person, individual do we want to be with? How are we going to get through whatever the fuck we getting through? You know what I'm saying? When you focus on yourself, then you be on some real shit. Like, for real, when I got here, you know, when I moved here, I was not in, like, the best stable mind frame. Like, when I say stable mind frame, meaning I wasn't happy. Like, I was happy that I got away from that raggedy-ass town. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't happy within myself. You know, I had left my husband. We have been together for... We've been together forever, okay? Like, this is 20 years now. So... You know, and I love him dearly. Regardless, you know, I still love him. And he had his issues with his drinking. And, you know what I'm saying? When I moved here, I was not in, like, that stable frame of thought. So, you know, I first, you know, I adjusted to the shit, okay? And then I got in, like, the worst dumbass, like, fake-ass relationship. Because I didn't want to be bothered with the person. But then when I left that alone, I just was like, you know what? Fuck it. April's going to do her. Meaning April's going to focus on herself. April is going to 
focus on hair and wigs. April's going to focus on money, okay? Herself and her children and what she wants to do, okay? And basically herself. And herself involves my family and making money and doing what is positive for myself. Nobody else but what I just mentioned, okay? And then when I did that, it just like brought me to the right thing, right frame of thought. And it was, it just allowed me to communicate better. And it just allowed me to realize that, you know, a lot of things that I used to do, it's not acceptable. And, you know, you have to change it up a little bit. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, Tiffany, you got to change it up a bit. You got to change it up a little bit. You got to change it up to where it's all about Tiffany. Now, when I say it's all about Tiffany, I don't mean, you know what I'm saying, get on some cocky shit and be stuck up. Because when you really are... It's all about Tiffany. That's on some grown woman shit. That's on some me shit. This, that's on some, I'm going to be positive and take care of Tiffany and make sure that I know who Tiffany is shit. And then when you do that shit, trust me, that shit all comes together and you feel like a better person inside and out. You know what I'm saying? Your health becomes a lot better. Stress bring a lot of bad juju to bad health issues. You know what I'm saying? If you think it don't, stress is the worst thing you can have. And when you ill and you have other issues fucking with you, you know what I'm saying? Stress brings on like a lot of fucking illness and stress brings on your illness maybe worse. You know, that shit could be like, you know, just at bay and then you get stressed out and you know what I'm saying? Shit is flaming up for you. Stress bring on a lot of different type of hormones and reactions to your body. And I promise you that. He, your boyfriend, is a stressful motherfucker, okay? And he ain't making you feel no better about yourself or your health, okay? Let alone the relationship that you in, okay? So, honey, Tiffany needs to be about herself and take care of herself and let this boy know, listen, we already tried this before, and I see you ain't really grown up, and we ain't really um, evolving. So, I'm going to have to take care of Tiffany and, you know what I'm saying, you go ahead over there and take care of you. Point blank, period. For real. Because as long as you allow this nigga to treat you like this and do this shit to you and you are going through some shit, the nigga going to go ahead and keep taking advantage of you because he going to start feeling like you need him because you're not well. On some real shit. He's really going to think that you need him because you're not feeling well. Prove that nigga wrong. Make sure that you take care of yourself, girl. You don't have to do exactly everything that I said. But just think about what the fuck I'm telling you for your own good. And make sure that you feel good. Don't let no nigga stress you out. <laughs> Don't let no nigga stress you out. Point blank, period. Okay. Okay, you guys. So this one is a little long. Hey, April. Thank you for a quick, real quick response. I just have to say that in my head, I know you and I were friends. I also live in Arizona and I secretly hope to run into you one day. But okay, here's my question. I literally do not know what to do and I'm holding off on saying anything until I get a neutral party perspective. You can call me Brandy in the video. Backstory. I have been with the same man for the last 13 years. We met when I was 20 and he was 21. I had a two-year-old with him, which he, excuse me, I had a two-year-old, which he accepted as his own. We had a wonderful relationship and I longed to be married to him. We waited years, but ultimately he was dealing with some personal issues and still is, but he finally proposed this past March. I was a little hesitant to say yes because he's a struggling alcoholic and not seeking professional help. But see, I can have I can and I have been supportive with that. He is quick to bring up that everyone has a vice and that he is no different from me or anyone else who uses food, work, sex, or in his case, alcohol to self-medicate. He's not abusive, but it's like taking care of a big baby. He's forgetful, irresponsible, and I think a lot of his money goes towards his drinking, which brings me to the problem I have. Fast forward to now. We had a child together in 2010 who has always lived with me. We have never lived together. Ever since becoming engaged, it has been the goal for us to move in together this spring. Until then, I feel like he should be contributing to the expenses of my household since I am his fiance and I do have his son. He has never split anything with me outside of paying for childcare occasionally and helping me with groceries only when I ask him multiple times over the last 13 years. I am not by any means materialistic. I'm willing to build with a man and work with someone as they become great in life and be patient while they do so and we will make ends meet together. But I feel like I have been extremely patient and he is getting off the hook by not by not helping to by not having to help pay day-to-day -day expenses like rent, utilities, and everyday living expenses of having children. 
It stresses me out and makes me feel like all the responsibility is on me. I have told him this. He is 34 years old and lives at home with his mother. He moved back in three years ago due to financial hardship. And honestly, it seems like he's still always broke. And when I ask for things like $50 for groceries, when I'm spending over $2,300 a month in expenses, he has a problem with it. He works full time and has a pretty good paying job. It honestly feels like me and the kids are on the back burner and what we get, whatever money is left over after he's done paying his little title loans, car notes, scratchers, and whatever else. I feel like a baby, I feel like a baby mama and not his partner and soon to be wife. It also makes me feel like I can't depend on him as a man to be a provider. Hmm. Reason for me asking for his financial help is simply this. We share a child together. I pay for all of the expenses alone, plus any and all expenses from my other son and his fa- and as his father is not in the picture. I'm often drowning in bills, frustrated, and fed up with the lack of financial support over the last 13 years. He doesn't get why I have an attitude or the fact that I push him away. I am just flat out pissed the fuck off. I feel like when you propose to someone, you should be ready for everything that comes with it. And even at the end of the day, if you don't want to marry me, you still have a financial obligation to our son. You know he has to eat every day, so why do I need to ask for grocery money? This has been a huge problem and we talked about it so many times, I lost count. And every time he tells me that he has a lot of debt and he does what he can and brings up being there previously before, um, and always brings up being there previously for our son. Our engagement is on hold and I'm contemplating his character after nearly having to beg for grocery money when me and the kids had nothing to eat due to his lack of support financially. First of all, am I wrong for asking for half of the bills when he does not currently live with me? I've contemplated child support. If I do, the relationship is over. He sees child support so negatively negatively, that we will not still be engaged if I do that. I love him, but he continues to not be a man and help after I've communicated it on numerous times. What can I do? What do I do? Girl, Brandy. Brandy has been with her boyfriend for 13 years, okay, since they were 20 and 21. Now they got, she already had a kid previous to this relationship and she had one with now her boyfriend or her fiance in 2010 so you know what I'm saying they don't live together they're engaged I don't think they ever lived together basically but he did live on his own and he moved back home with his mother three years ago so she got to beg for money for grocery money okay he don't even help out like that financially you know what I'm saying you know she just basically contemplating on getting married to the dude because, you know, they're supposed to move in together in the spring. And if you're not trying to pay for some shit now, dude, what the fuck? Let me tell y'all. First of all, dude has been living at home for three fucking years with his mother. Okay. And I'm sorry, but I'd rather go live with my girlfriend and my kids before I live with my mama because at mama house, you can't do whatever the fuck you want or can you? Like, I mean, Some parents just don't give two fucks if you do whatever the hell you want to do in their house. However, even if you do what the fuck ever you want to do in your house, you still got to help out with some of the bills at your mama house. Now, what I'm feeling, you know what I'm saying? Like, this just me. I might be wrong, but dude living at home. Dude's living at home at his mama house, okay? And his mama was making ends meet and making, you know, making it before he came along because... I'm saying, I'm, I mean, I don't know her financial um, situation, but if she had her own home and he was able to go to that shit, that means that, you know what I'm saying, she wasn't homeless and she was taking care of shit, okay? So it ain't like he is like a well-needed asset, but I do know and I do feel this. Since he living at his mother's house and she was able to pay her shit on her own, he moved to his mother's house because of his own financial reasons, because his ass didn't have enough money to survive on his own. So he moved with his mother. And how about this? This is how I'm feeling. Like, I'm, I'm just saying. Just don't get me wrong. But like, okay, so you guys know my kids, my son lives here, okay? And like I told you guys, they have to pay rent to me too. Not all my kids, but the ones that are an adult and have jobs. They have to pay me to live here. Now, let's just say, you know, Everything is included. That's the only thing they have to give me some rent money. Now, let's just say my son came to me and was like, well, I know I got to pay you 
let's just say $300 a month. But my check was short. My hours were really short. And my check is only for a hundred. It's for two hundred dollars. Um, is it okay if I give you like one fifty that? What am I gonna say? No, because that's not what I want. Or okay, fine. But I'm still gonna pay the rent regardless of how much you gave me. You know what I'm saying? So this is how I'm seeing it. Like he might not have to really contribute like that. And if he wasn't able to contribute his agreed share, she's still gonna pay the bills and he's still going to be able to be there. You know what I'm saying? So me per se, if her boyfriend was to move with Brandy, Brandy's boyfriend was to move in with her, he might not still have these options available to him. He might have to really pay and come out of pocket. So a part of me, it feels like he's still at his mother house because he don't have to be so responsible. Okay. Bottom line, straight up. Like he ain't really got to be so fucking responsible. He ain't really got to do shit. Okay. I mean, he got to do shit, but he ain't really got to do too much shit. He might just got to pay his motherfucking bills. Cause she did not mention anything about helping his mother. She said he got to pay his car note, his car insurance, his scratch offs and whatever money he got left over she gets. She did not mention anything about his fucking mother. So therefore I think that that's the place for him to just freeload and take care of what the fuck his personal shit is. Okay. Personal shit means car note because you don't really need to have a car note. You can go buy a fucking car without having to spend so much and still be able to get around. That's your own personal shit. That's your own luxury shit. Electricity and rent is not a fucking luxury, okay? You need to pay that shit in order to survive. So I think he's there to just tell, to make sure to pay his own fucking personal debt and not worry about the much needed. So that may be the reason why he ain't moved in with Brandy yet because he already know, like, if he go and live with Brandy, he ain't going to be able to just live there and only pay his car shit and his scratch off tickets and just live there while she paying all the bills. So I'm feeling, I'm, I'm totally feeling like that. And if they in a relationship and y'all got a kid together, why the fuck ain't you living with your girlfriend, fiance, mother of your child? Like where we do this at? Like, I don't think he's ready to be responsible. Like on some real shit, I really don't feel like he is ready to be responsible because y'all been together for how long? 13 motherfucking years. That's a long time. And y'all don't live together and y'all got a fucking eight-year-old together? Like, come on, dude. What the fuck? Like, on some real shit. Like, what the hell? Okay? Like, where are we doing this at? And, like, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> he drinks and he uses his drinking an excuse as well. Everybody self medicates. You might do it one way and I'm, she may do it different. So basically everybody self medicates. So I might self medicate by just making wigs. That's okay. But, and you might self medicate by smoking weed. That's okay. And you might self medicate by getting drunk. That's okay. It's not okay that you cannot use something that's bad for yourself Versus something that's good for yourself as an excuse to self-medicate. Like, that's just a motherfucking lousy, lame-ass excuse. Like, come on. I, you guys already know I have been through the bullshit with the alcoholism shit with my, my husband or my ex-husband. or Whatever you want to call him. He's my husband, okay? And that shit could be very, very tiresome on a person. And it will fucking wear you the motherfucking down. And it will numb you. And after a while, you just be like over that shit, okay? And I'm pretty sure that Brandy is over that shit, okay? You you know, sometimes it's one thing to be supportive to a person because we all got to be, you know, if we in a relationship or even if we ain't in a relationship but we have friends and family members, we want to be fucking supportive to them. But here, this is what I tell my kids. I'm all for helping people, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep helping somebody that don't want to help themselves. Like, why the fuck am I doing all the goddamn work? Like, for real. So she's being supportive to him, and she's trying to be supportive to him, but he's still like using his fucking issues as self medicating as alcoholism. That's one thing. She says he's not abusive, but it's like literally taking care of a baby. That shit is annoying as fuck, and nobody has time for that. We got other shit to do in life. Like, nigga, grow the fuck up on some real shit grow the fuck up. Okay. Like, let me tell you something. Let me, let me just say this. I, I don't, I don't like asking people for shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like when I say that, meaning she's begging him for damn near begging him for grocery money. So his kids and her can eat because she's 
footing the bill for every fucking thing in her home while he just lives with his mother's house and has a nice cooked meal. She done went, like, they done went a week without eating, like, eating. Like, you know, not even, I'm pretty sure they ate, but I'm pretty sure they wasn't eating, like, like, top fucking ramen. Like, when I say top ramen, I mean, like, steak and shit like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit was low. Pantry was fucking low. And $50 ain't shit for groceries. Like, girl, you need, I'm, now maybe if it was just you, you could do it with $50, but you got an eight-year-old and one that was probably like one or two. So you got probably the like eight, 10 or 11-year-old and you got yourself. $50 a week in groceries is not a lot, but there are some people that can definitely stretch it and make it work. And I'm all for that. But I do know this, like, who the fuck wants to keep asking somebody for something and they always giving an excuse or they don't even reply back and answer them with a yes, I got you, here it is. Or you just got to keep asking. Like, to me, I, you know what? Like, I I don't, I just, I, I don't, it's not about a pride thing, but I think to me it's like a disappointment thing. Like, like I tell my husband, I don't like asking people for shit. I don't like asking anybody for anything because I hate the word no. And even if you say it a different way, like, well, I'm sorry I don't got it if I did. Like, that shit is still no to me, okay? You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, hey, you got $50 I could borrow? Oh, no. Or they don't reply. Or I'm sorry, I ain't got it. I wish I did. If I did, I, I don't want to hear that shit. Like, even if you said it nicely, that shit is still a disappointment to me. And then it make me feel some type of way. Like, damn, I shouldn't have fucking asked them because now I feel embarrassed. And like, I don't really like to keep, I don't like to ask people for anything for, in general. But I damn sure don't like to fucking keep asking them for the same fucking thing over and over again. Like, on, like come on, you know what I'm saying? Like, after like the second time, it's like I'm begging. Like I don't, and I don't, I don't really want to feel like I'm begging for shit. So I can understand how you feel like, and uh, and then the nigga's like, well, if you put child support on me, I'm not going to want to be in a relationship with you. Let me tell you something. That's just a fucking lame ass excuse to tell you that I'm a bum. I'm broke. I don't want to help the fuck out. I'm not responsible. And if you put child support on me, then we're going to break up. First of all, nigga, I shouldn't have to put child support on you because if you was a real motherfucking man and you was all about that life and you was taking care of our kids and us as a family man, as in a grown ass man, then I wouldn't have to put child support on your fucking dumb ass. Straight like that. Okay. Why should you have to fucking put child support on someone? When you put child support on someone, that means that you have asked them and you have fucking relied on them to help you with your child. And the motherfucker did not do so. So when you have to go to child support, that means you were forced to do the shit. I don't think that people push out. I don't think that women push out babies. Ugh. And then, you know what I'm saying, wake up the next morning and everything is la, 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 like the nigga been taking care of the baby. Even if y'all not together, he been taking care of the baby, helping you with the baby. He's been doing 100% the manly thing to do, the fatherly thing to do. And then you just wake up one day and say, you know what? I'm going to put Alan on child support because he's such a great dad. And that's what I'm going to do today because I don't have shit else to do. And I just think that it would be a good idea. That's not what the fuck and how it goes. The shit is like this. Man, I've been asking this nigga. You you wake up for probably the 15th time. I've been asking this nigga Allen for money for the past fucking weeks and months, okay? And this nigga still ain't come through, okay? He ain't even bought a bag of fucking diapers yet for the baby, okay? Or the toddler. And I'm, you know what? I'm fed up. I'm fed the fuck up. Let me take my irritated ass down to court and put some child support on this nigga because he really is not doing what the fuck he's supposed to do. He's a deadbeat, 100% one, deadbeat, negative zero father. Okay? That's how the fuck it goes down. So, dude, if um you want to break up with me because you're not helping provide and I put child support on you, then I see you later, okay, because I shouldn't have to be forced to do so. You should not have to be forced to keep asking for money to feed y'all kids, okay? And then on top of that, like, yes, he should help you. Yes, he should help you with groceries. Yes, he should help you. Y'all are in a relationship. Y'all are damn near fucking married, okay? He should help you with the bills because I know he's not helping his mother with them, okay? Let me tell you something. If you are contemplating on being engaged to him and you have put the and um, the marriage on hold and engagement on hold, sweetheart, you are doing the right thing. Go with your gut feeling, not even your gut feeling, but your mind feeling, your mind, your, your mind is your state of mind feeling, your, your heart, your brain. You have thought this through. 
Okay, you have thought thought this through and you have given me all of the reasons why you have put this shit on hold. And the reason is why is you know damn well he's not responsible. And why the fuck would you want to marry somebody that you already know is a headache, a problem, and is not responsible? Straight up. Like, serious. I'm pretty sure you do love him. And I'm pretty sure that he knows this. Okay, but if you have to constantly keep asking him for stuff and he's constantly giving you excuses, then sweetie, it is not worth your time. It's fucked up for him to even have to go and say, well, if you put child support on me, I'm going to break up with you. What a motherfucking thing to say to somebody. Like, that right there lets you know that the nigga really don't give two fucks. Like, it's all about the money. Like, who does that? Like, you should be fucking... Happy that you have kids and you should be proud to be able to take care of them and you should want to take care of them. Not have the, the mother of your child, your fiance, fucking begging you for money. A part of me feels like, did he just, ain't, did, they, did he just propose to you just because, just to kind of like, you know, ease ease you over, push you over, and make you, you know, feel like a little bit better about the relationship? Like, I'm trying to figure this out because. If you guys got a kid together, y'all been together for so long, and you know, saying you are engaged, why wouldn't you want to live with your fiance and be a family? You can't say, well, I don't want to get married. Um, I don't want to live together until we get married. Because if he was to say some dumb shit like that to you, like, oh, well, then you should have felt that way about, you know, having a child together before we were married or even having sex. So, sex. So that's not even an excuse. That's not a good excuse for me. Like, I'm, I'm not going to run with that. I damn sure ain't going to run with that. I just feel like, you know what? He doesn't want to be fucking responsible. Because if he really wanted to be responsible and be a fucking man, he would have definitely fucking stepped it up. He would not come to you with no fucking excuses, okay? It's buying scratchers, scratch-offs, is that what you mean? Fucking, that's a waste of money. So I got to wait for you to hit the scratch off so that you can send me and the kids or give me and the kids um, some, some change. Listen. I ain't gonna, if I got, if I gotta ask you for something, I'm only gonna ask you one motherfucking time. And if you can't um, help out that one time, or you can't reply with the what the fuck I wanna hear, then dude, nigga, uh, listen. I'm going to have to not keep asking you, and I'm gonna do this shit on my own. And if I am forced to go to child support, well, I guess we're not just gonna be together because you don't want to take care of your kids. Like, as women are single mothers. Because she's kind of like a single mother. He don't live there. I feel like, you know, as single mothers, we go through a lot. And it sucks because then there's the single mothers that have the support from their baby daddies or their exes or whatever you want to fucking call them. And then there's the single mothers that don't at all. She doesn't have the support of nearly, you know, she's got like a, she's got two kids' fathers. And one of them is zero supportive. And then the other one is like, 25% supportive because, you know, he pays, helps pay for child care. Like, okay, woohoo. I might be putting too much percentage on that. But when you have this type of baby, um, this type of single mother who has to struggle and do it on her own, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, that shit is hard. Trust me, because I have been one of those. And that shit is really fucking hard, okay? You know, we, we, we really go through a lot. And it sucks when you have to feel like you are forced to take that person to child support court. Like, come on, man. I, I, If it were me, even if, like, you know, even as women, women pay child support too. Like, when you have kids, take care of them. Like, they has to be here. Take care of them. Like, I could not, like, really want, like, I, even if it's, not, even not the situation, but, like, when you have those deadbeat deadbeats, those 110 to the 10th power deadbeats that don't even call, come visit, pay any child support, like, they just disappeared off the face of the earth, deadbeats. It's like, how the fuck do you walk away from your child? Like, you don't think about them. Like, you don't wonder if they okay, if they doing all right, if they hungry, if they need something, if they well. Like, I'm just, you know, like, I, I always say that, like, because as a woman, if I didn't have my children and I had to, you know what I'm saying, like, pay child support and take care of them, I would be checking on them. I would be making sure they had shit. I wouldn't even, you wouldn't even need to take me to child support. I would just make sure, I don't want to fuck with you, but I'm going to make sure that my kids is good because, like, you you had them. These are your kids. Like, how do you just like not give a fuck? And then like in his in his case, 
to me, it's like, you don't give a fuck enough. Like, come on, man. Like, let's, let me tell you something, ladies. Like, let's not take too much bullshit from a man. And let's definitely not take too much bullshit from a man when it comes to our kids, especially the ones that we have with them. Because they will allow, if you allow them to, like, get away with shit, trust me, they will definitely try to get away with shit. Like, on some real shit when it comes to child support and dumb shit like that. Like, come on, man. Let me tell you something. You are very right for putting things on hold. And if I were you, I would definitely keep it that way. I would not want a grown-ass man or a grown-ass child that I have to take care of. So you got to take care of your bills and shit and your kids. And then when he's intoxicated, you got to take care of him and shit. Like, come on, let's, let me tell you something, sweetheart. Relationships, they come and they go. For real, sometimes you got to walk away from that relationship in order for the other person to get it the fuck together on some real shit, like straight up. Trust me, I'm the first, I, I'm a very, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know, I know this. Take it from me, I know this. Sometimes you guys have to walk away from the shit. And if it's meant to be, then y'all are going to be back together. But sometimes you got to walk away from the shit, no matter how long you guys have been together. Just in order for the other person to get it together. Because if you don't and you always in their corner and they support and you supporting them and you helping them, but they not helping themselves, it's not going to get no better. You got to walk away from that shit just in order for them to see like, damn, I'm missing out on her. I'm missing out on my kids. I like, this is, you know what I'm saying? Let me try to get it together. I know this. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it don't when you walk away. But I guarantee you, like, you cannot stay in a relationship that is just bringing you so much misery to where you putting that shit on hold. If you got to second guess your fucking engagement, then, sweetheart, that means that you do not need the motherfucking engagement. Straight up. Okay? Like, I'm not trying to lock nobody's love affair or anything like that, but I just feel like this. If you know it's toxic and it's already trouble... Sweetie, just let it be toxic and be trouble, but without you in it. Straight. Okay. So, you guys, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. I'm going to go. I'm going to go edit this video that you guys are watching. And, you know, save me some turkey and all that good stuff. You know, you, you know, I got a post office box and shit. You can, like, overnight me a plate. FedEx to the freaking post office box so that I can get some brownies and cookies, some sweet potato pie, you know, something like that. You could some baked goods, send it to my post office. You know what I'm saying? I, I like goodies. I like I like treats. I like gifts, surprises, and shit like that. So you know, I hope you guys have an amazing Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? Be safe. You know, if you're drinking, please don't drink and drive. Have somebody that's responsible. Hold your keys and make sure that you get to your destination all in one piece and safe. You know, love your loved ones. Be positive. Don't start no negative drama bullshit. It's the holidays. Holidays. Love. Holidays. Okay? And, you know what I'm saying? Just love one another. So, on that note, stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and thumbs this video up. And I'll see you guys on the other side.